Right, welcome back. We Stand Together is a series of stories where Wish TV gives leaders and members of the community an opportunity to share their voices. Well, tonight, a special edition with our friends at Community Link. They sit down with Dr. Darren Shesky, and founder and senior pastor of Heartland Church. He reflects on diversity, leadership, and speaking out. So, Pastor Darren, Sunday morning is by far the most racially segregated time in America and you believe in racial and ethnic diversity. Tell us why that's so important to you and how that came about. Well, it's what I grew up seeing. I grew up in the Caribbean. I grew up in a lot of different island nations. And so from my earliest years, I know what it feels like to be a minority. I know what it feels like to be in a highly diverse setting. And I watched uh, a church. I grew up, my church experience was incredibly diverse. And so really, I think that's also, as I grew and I learned what the heart of God is, it, it was God's intention all along. The Bible begins with God having a vision for all nations, and the Bible ends with all tongues, every nation in heaven. And uh, part of the job of the church is to represent God's vision now, long before we get there. Being here in Indianapolis, sometimes it's difficult to really feel and live that diversity. Yeah. How is it, Harlan? How is it for you as a main pastor, as, as a person that is leading that organization? I think you really have to have real relationships with people. The problem is we, we tend to live our life as an island, as an individual. Mm -hmm. Churches end, end up thinking they are just a little island of individuals, when really we are called to be a part of a greater community. I see myself not just as a pastor of my church, but I'm called to be a spiritual leader for the entire city in Indianapolis. But is the community referring to that? Is the community really relating to that, to, to the same feeling that, that, that you're getting? Well, sure. All people have a lot of the same fears. We worry about uh, money. We worry about dying. All people worry about uh, the relationship they have with their fathers mm -hmm. and so on. But what happens is people live separate lives. They live in different Americas. So it takes leadership to bridge the divide and begin talking to the heart needs of people. So there seems to be now, with all that's happening across America, a true desire to understand, yes. to move closer together. Do you believe that's happening? Well, I see it in some sectors. I see a lot of people, especially my hope is in the younger generation that truly wants to embrace uh, the diversity and to listen to other people. It's, it's harder for older people sometimes, and especially for people who are used to being in a privileged position, to listen to other worldviews. But I think that dialogue is so important, and we have to listen. What is diversity for you? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's about representation for me. I don't think you can lead anything if you don't have the right voices at the table. And so that's what gets people in trouble. They try to make decisions and they're not informed. They don't have friendships and people speaking into the process. So for me, it's more than diversity. It's about leadership. We have to have the right people at the table, the right friendships. So what's your vision? How can we truly, as America and in the church, reconcile us to one another as the gospel talks about? Well, the gospel is all about the oppressed and the poor and about people who are in the margins of society and Jesus said he came for them. And so as leaders, we have to listen to those voices. The voice of leadership in the Bible has always been to speak up. One of my uh, great revelations is that uh, the African American or the black American pastor has done an amazing job of speaking up for the needs of his mm. church, whereas white pastors tend to speak to the church. And I think that we have to embrace that and speak up for the needs of the minority, get that visible, and then take those Christian values of love and equality for all and then apply them to the great needs that we find. Once you realize your brother is hurting then, and you really feel they're your brother, you're motivated to do something about that. We stand together. Yes, right. Thank you. So That's right. How, do, how are the people accepting that? I think that it is the heart of the, that's the whole purpose of the gospel is to help people see that we're not supposed to live isolated, individual lives thinking about ourselves. God's vision is always that we're thinking about the needs of others. And you know, if we, if ministry is just meeting needs with love, so the more I learn about the needs of my city and the more I help people move towards really the God-given purpose inside of them, it brings focus to their life. It brings a filter to the voice of the critic. Uh, it really brings the fulfillment that we're looking for when we're doing what we're made to do. Remember, you can also listen to our We Stand Together podcast anytime.
Find tonight's episode and others online at the All Indiana Podcast Network.com.